Okay, awesome. So this is going to be a lightning talk, so I won't keep you for another 45 minutes. I know that uh, probably doesn't work with your schedule. Uh, okay, so about me, that you, you know me. Okay, never mind. Uh, so the interesting question, why, why you stay behind, I think, is why does flashing Android ROMs suck so bad, right? Um, I can answer you that question is because every Android manufacturer does their own fucking thing and it's stupid. So everybody does a different partition layout. Everybody uh, reacts to the same signals from the computer differently. Everybody, uh, yeah, everybody makes their own version of Android entirely. I mean, if you want to build an Android operating system, you download 50 gigabytes of data and then you compile it into a 500 MB image, right? So. Yeah, it is terrible. There's no standardization behind it whatsoever. And that is why uh, flashing Android ROMs is so terrible. So there's no standardized installer. Uh, what you do to install an Android ROM is somehow you figure out how to unlock the device. Uh, that's going to be difficult in most cases, right? Uh, so you might have to use some weird leaked OEM tool that uh, some factory worker just took home someday and then forgot the USB key in a bar, um, uh, something like that, right? Uh, so I, I, I once read a guide where it just said, okay, use this tool, it's in Chinese, but click the big square button. <laughs> don't, don't click the rectangular button because that will break your device. Click the square button. And yeah. That's, uh, that's how it is. So you have to unlock it somehow. Uh, then you download a bunch of files. Uh, then you set up ADB and fastboot. Uh, hopefully you, hopefully it will be configured by your distribution. But if you're on Windows, it's different. If you're on Mac, it's completely different. Uh, so yeah, you have to figure it out somehow. Set up ADB and fastboot. Uh, then you, you find, um, like, an, a guide on, uh, on XDA developers. How to, how to install the operating system after that, right? So you copy over the ADB and fastboot commands uh, and hope that you did everything right, and then you recycle your heartbreak device and buy an iPhone. So that's how it usually goes. So that's terrible, right? It, it can't be like this. We can't have it like that for Ubuntu Touch, at least. So uh, we said, because nobody will use it. Nobody whatsoever. Um, so... We thought, can we do this? Can we react to every device differently? Uh, is there any chance uh, to get rid of this hell? Uh, so we thought about it and we did it. So this is the UbiPods installer. Uh, we won't do a live demo because we can't uh, set it up like this here. Uh, but you can just believe me, in many cases it works. <laughs> so I get uh, two types of feedback for the UbiPods installer either it didn't work, or this is the mo most amazing thing ever. There's nothing in between, though. So there's just these two types of feedback. Uh, so what it's supposed to do, you're supposed to connect your device, then it tells you how to enable developer mode. That's the big, friendly blue button. And uh, then it should detect the device. If that doesn't happen, you click the big, friendly white button, select the device manually, and then you see a bunch of beautiful animations that I always get hated for because they take a lot of CPU. Uh, but I think they are beautiful and that's the most important thing because the entire project is to please me and not to please you. Um, <laughs> and uh, then it's supposed to just work. Um, it's Electron. I know, I'm sorry. Uh, but we need it to work on Linux, on every Linux. We need it to work on Windows because we do have people on Windows who say, okay, I have to use Windows, but I want a more open phone, right? Uh, it needs to work there as well. And it needs to work on macOS. So Electron is the way to go. Uh, you could write 10 different GUIs, but we don't want that. So we use Electron. Yes, it uses a lot of CPU. Yes, it uses a lot of RAM, but only once. Because you install once and then you're done and then you're your life is changed for the better because you have Ubuntu Touch. So this is how it, how it works right now. So basically, uh, most of our devices are very, very similar. Uh, what we do is, uh, I don't know if you're familiar, if you ever did this, uh, copy a bunch of fastboot and ADB commands if you ever did this, uh, and then brick your device. 
um, but it's mostly the same. So with fastboot, you can flash partitions. That, that's what it's called. And with ADB, you can communicate with the recovery, which is a, like a smaller version of the operating system that's there uh, to help you fix your device if you broke something. You can also break it so bad that you don't have recovery anymore, then yeah, that's a problem. Um, so that's the two uh, utilities we have that the installer uses as well. Um, so what we do with uh, to install Ubuntu Touch in general is just we install our own recovery because we need some special features, uh, then start that recovery, uh, send some files to the device, then tell the recovery, okay, install those files. Then you see a beautiful animation, uh, depending on the device, and some you also just see nothing, but on most you see. Um, and But I didn't make that animation. That's the funny part. That made Mario's grips gone, but he's like the same probably. Um, yeah, and then it's installed. So that's what the installer does behind the scenes. Um, we did this thing uh, when we forked uh, Ubuntu Tatu when you took it over from Canonical. Uh, so it was like a couple night shifts and then we had it working basically. But it was terrible, unmaintainable code. Uh, so now we did a couple more night shifts, uh, broke everything and then fixed it again and uh, it's almost done. I was really, really hoping to show you uh, the finished part. So we have a lot of things working behind the scenes but we still have to short, sort out some GUI stuff. So uh, this afternoon there will be a workshop where we will start working on the UbiPods installer. So we made the code significantly better. It's it's amazing. You want to buy that code dinner and, 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 and uh, it's beautiful. And yeah, so now people can actually start and come in and help improve it. Why did we have to improve the code? Because we had wanted to improve, uh, we wanted to introduce new features. So what this is supposed to be doing, it's also supposed to be installing other operating systems. Because yes, of course, we want everybody to use Ubuntu Touch, um, but we also are aware that Ubuntu Touch is not yet a, a full-time solution for everyone. So some people just need the peace of mind to know, okay, I can go back to Android. I can go back because I won't be able to copy the commands because I will break something. But if the installer does it for me as well, then that's okay for me. Then I can just go back and then I'm, I'm good. But I will try it out maybe once now and then maybe again in half a year and then I like it. Because, of course, they will stay with a solution that works, that works best and that's the best and that is open to touch, right? I mean, obviously. Uh, so that is also something we want to do. It works behind the scenes, but I can't demo it because I didn't finish the user interface because I would need a couple more night shifts, which is really a, uh, a pity. But if you come to the, the workshop this afternoon, um, then we can work on that and we can look at it. Uh, so we also introduced some modularization to it because before it was just all uh, one repository on GitHub. It was all um, pretty convoluted. It was all tied in together. I don't know if you're familiar with Electron. We also did something that you're really not supposed to do, which is have everything in them in the renderer. So what Electron does is it's basically a web browser that is started locally and it has JavaScript to start the web browser and it has JavaScript to run logic in the web browser. And what you're supposed to do is have logic in the main process that starts the web browser and then only have user interface in the in the web browser. So I can see that I'm boring and confusing some of you people. Uh, so we'll stop with this. Um, but just believe me, it's beautifully modularized, modularized now. And... Um, other people can start working on it. And the nice thing is uh, we made libraries of it that other projects also can use and then contribute back to us. So we made a library for the um, for ADB and Fastboot that every um, Node app can now use. Um, it's very stable, very well tested as, as, as well. If I didn't write tests for that, maybe I would be far farther along with the uh, with the user interface, uh, but you're supposed to write tests, so uh, I did that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would uh, really like uh, for you guys to to uh, check out these if you are Node developers, or also if you're not, because JavaScript is really fun. It's a great way to 
uh, to also start coding. Okay, maybe it's a little complex to start coding, but uh, if you're really motivated to learn how to how to start coding, it's amazing. I I love it. Um, JavaScript. So you can check out these uh, GitHub repositories. Check out some uh, some bugs that need help. Uh, check out the code. It's all very readable now. Um, so maybe start with the Android tools because that is beautiful. Uh, the other one, wait until the update has landed or help today in the workshop, uh, and we'll we'll figure something out that that you can help with. Okay. Um, so that's basically it. Um, I was hoping to to actually demo something, but uh, that that would be a bad idea because I I can't convey the awesomeness of what's happening behind the scenes uh, on the screen. So uh, we'll leave it at this, um, and then. Maybe I will do a couple of videos, or I will definitely do a couple of videos because I'm really excited about what's uh, what's going to be there when I'm done with this. Okay, there was a question. You. So you mentioned that the installer is for different Linux distributions, Windows and Mac OS. Have you? already made plans how to distribute it? Yes, because we are already distributing it. Um, people are using it. So we, uh, the one we recommend at the moment is a snap package because that's uh, a really efficient way of making sure that the system is really the same. Um, but that is, okay, they, they make it easy to build it, but you have to keep some, some extra constraints in mind. So we do have a snap package that is on the snap store. It's fully confined. So it is, it follows the, the security rules you're supposed to follow. Uh, we also collaborated with the Snapcraft developers a little, uh, to make that fully work. So you don't have to enter your password to install before you had to execute some things as the administrator user. Now, um, we collaborated with the Snapcraft people, uh, to create an interface. It's called, uh, that does that for you, so you don't have to enter your password anymore. So just uh, can always detect the device. So we have a snap package that's on the store. It's more or less stable. It's not the the stuff yet that's in the pipeline, uh, but it's more or less stable and will be even better. Uh, that actually has 2,200 active installations right now because Snapcraft does give you uh, some uh, some statistics. So that's the only statistics I have. Uh, we also have an app image and a deb, and that's it for Linux. And then we have an, uh, just a portable executable for Windows and a DMG for macOS. So that's it. Yeah, Electron has many awesome things that help you build packages. You still have to you still have to watch it. Doesn't take away uh, all your work, but it goes a great uh, great deal of the way. Hi, um, you said that uh, for the next version, you want the um, installer application to be able to install UV ports and then install back Android. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Do you mean install the same Android that it was on the device? Install uh, like Lineage OS on, on those devices? What exactly you, you mean by that? Not the same one. Uh, but we introduce a config file format. Uh, it's not completely nailed down because, of course, we have to test it along the way. Um, but we introduce a config file format so people can write configurations to install any operating system, basically, that requires the same, uh, the same types of steps that we already have. We also want it to be flexible for the future uh, because, for example, we have experimental images for things like the Pinebook, which needs to be flashed on an SD card or the Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, so the installer could, in theory, also do that in the future because there's also some uh, great work already done to have um, node apps that flash SD cards. A popular one is uh, Etcher that many people use, uh, so we could um, use some of their work because it is open source uh, and put that in the installer as well. And uh, yes, 
uh, then also support things like this. So in the future, we could introduce new steps to the config file format we have, and then also have very, very different devices. Also, the Pine phone, um, I don't know if you listened to the talk before, uh, the Pine phone will work a little differently. So this was a prerequisite to make sure that we can install the Pine phone with the UbiPod installer in the future, because so far it basically tried to did everything the same way, and then it had some some conditions that say, okay, if this fails, then try that, if that fails, and so on, and then it has some uh, some parameters where no new, okay, this device, I have to do that specially. But in the future, there will be nothing hard-coded in the installer. It will all come from config files, and you can write that, those config files manually. Uh, so you can basically install any operating systems. Of course, if you have a really obscure one, that is not configured for your device, then you can't go back. But you, at least you can get away from Ubuntu Touch again if, you, uh, if your first instinct is to run, right? And a um, question uh, people keep asking is, uh, what about my, my smartphone? So uh, on Ubuntu Touch. So what's the next smartphone Ubuntu, UbiPort installer will uh, support? Um, the next future. Yes. Uh, yeah. So not, it, not not the buying phone. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So you mean existing devices? Yeah, I, I get that, uh, and I get that it's kind of ridiculous that we only support twelve devices, right? Um, so we have done a lot of work to make porting um, better, more efficient. Uh, if you were in Rijon, you heard about Halium, which is a project where we collaborate on the same porting types. Uh, with, for example, KDE Plasma Mobile. Um, but we had to make some changes in the Ubuntu Touch part, higher up, uh, to make Halium ports work with Ubuntu Touch. Uh, this is what's going on in the Edge channel right now, if you listen to the previous talk. Uh, so as soon as we have Edge in there, uh, we can add more devices. Actually, I think the first one is going to be some Sony, I forgot the name, Sony Xperia Z or X, something like that, because that is already very, very well working. But I think there's there's a bunch of, of uh, ports for Halium already started that you will see uh, coming up in the UbiPorts installer after we land Edge. Sorry? The OnePlus 3 has started, I think that's also pretty stable. Um, yeah, I don't know when, when that's going to be in the installer because I can't follow every every porting project because I think there's 40. Um, yeah, uh, so, but I saw some, some videos of the OnePlus 3 as well, yeah. Um, I know someone also has the OnePlus 5T, uh, also maybe more recent ones. Uh, so more recent devices is something we have been asked a lot about. That doesn't mean that we deprecate existing ones. Uh, but yes, we of course we want to support more devices, yeah. Okay, thank you very much.